Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Real with Juan Martinez. And Stephanie Ray. And man, I'm excited, Stephanie. You know what? We have an incredible guest today. You know, it's the start of a new year. Come on, 2021. Happy New Year. Happy everyone. New Year. You know, it, it's cool. Is I, I mean, I guess for me it's cool because I was telling somebody the other day, I mean, for me, the way I see life now, you know, uh, every year, you know, it's about for me for growth. You mm -hmm. know, but there was a season of my life where it was like I would say Happy New Year, but I should have been yelling Happy Same Year right. because nothing, nothing was, was changing. <laughs> yeah, nothing was changing. It was just another year. And we come up with these list of resolutions and yet we don't do them. Like we'll start off maybe a little bit, you know, yeah, then you'll you get to like March and then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, March and that's if you're yeah. like go to church every now and then. If you don't go to church at all, you January, maybe yeah, the first week's like a week out. and then you forget. You know, so this year I feel like you know, my hope with today's guest, because this guy's came so far, you know, from when I've known him and just doing incredible things in the kingdom. Oh, and big shout out to all the people that have been writing, all of our partners, the subscribers. Yes, everyone Come sending on. in letters and letting us know that they're listening, that they're enjoying it. Yeah. You know, the song requests, all of the above. And we're just so grateful for everyone that's listening. Yeah, yeah, man. All those that are supporting, you know, all the Havoc in Apparel, that's mm -hmm. been super cool, right? Because, you know, Havoc in Apparel, Havoc in Apparel. Yeah. You know, I feel like I gotta get into the commercial mode. But yeah, let them know what it is. What's yeah, man, in? let me tell you something. It's a citizen of heaven, mm -hmm. right? You know, the Apostle Paul says that we're citizens of heaven. If you're Puerto Rican, you're from Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. right? That's what makes you Puerto Rican. If you're from America, or you're an American, you consider yourself an American, yeah. it's because you're shouting, I'm from America. Right. Well, it's time for us to really shout from the rooftops that we're citizens of heaven and we're Hevikins. Mm -hmm. So that's what it means. And all of the apparel helps our evangelism efforts mm -hmm. and also the radio. So yeah. every time you make a purchase, like I think this month, what we're doing with Hevikin Apparel, we're coming out with all this new line, it's like nice quality bags and all that. And this month what we're doing is uh, 10% or 20% of our proceeds. I'm not really sure yet uh, because you know the whole meeting thing. Yeah. But are going towards heels to halos. Mm -hmm. So every purchase you make for the month of January, yeah, um, is January is uh, Human Trafficking Awareness Human Month. Yeah, and fact. So part of what the ministry Heels to Halos does is you know rescue those women who come out of the sex industry. A lot of them have been trafficked. A lot of them, you know, fell into that lifestyle. So yeah. we're excited to support them and partner with them as well. Absolutely. And so you know what, man? Let's just kind of get started with our guest today. You know, we're, we're going to talk about starting where you are, right? Because a lot of times I feel like a bunch of people, uh, you know, and even myself, you think like you got to get all this stuff done. Yeah. And then you never get nothing done, you know? <laughs> but uh, if you start where you are, I believe that's incredible. So I'm going to read the scripture and then sure. I'm going to bring in our guest, sure. okay? So the scripture for today is going to be Proverbs 29. 18. And so I'm going to read it for you in the Passion Translation because I think it's super dope. <laughs> uh, no other reason, you know. <laughs> but it says, where there is no clear prophetic vision, people quickly wander astray. You know, they're wilding out. Like, that means you're all over the they're place. Tripping. Yeah, you're tripping. Mm -hmm. You're all over the place because you don't have a clear prophetic vision. And I think Pastor Ray will kind of enlighten us in that. It says, but when you follow the revelation, right, what's revealed to you, what you can see of the word, Heaven's bliss fills your soul. Wow. So, man, let's welcome our guest today, Pastor, <laughs> Pastor Ray, Ray Sandoval. Woo! What's Hello. going on, man? Hey, you know, first question before, because people probably don't know who you are and where you come from. Uh, tell them a little bit about yourself and what are some of the things you do today? Yeah, uh, Abilene, Texas. Yeah. Um, Rise Church is our church senior pastor. Um, yeah, nice. We also have a men's home, Rise Discipleship, six what? month. No, yeah, go ahead. Six month home for guys who struggle with drugs, alcohol. Really, uh, anybody that's going through any issue, any problem, homeless, homelessness, brokenness, um, anything they're going through, they have a free place that they can go to for six months. That's incredible. Yeah. And you know, it's funny because you know, you could, you know, we'll give here in a little bit where you can find Pastor Ray Sandoval. I think he has a Facebook page, right, Ray Sandoval. Uh, what's the website? Rise Church Online. Rise Church Online. And so um, these are places where you can find them. Now, the crazy part, uh, mm -hmm. Stephanie, is that, you know, he was teaching our staff today. You know, it's incredible, yeah. all of these things. But Pastor Ray, even though they might see, because you have a beautiful building in Abilene, I call you the verdict of Abilene. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, hey, yeah. the equivalent of that is, yeah. I feel like, you know, I really mean that when I say that, you know. Um, but but you're your own individual person, you know. Mm -hmm. It's just the, the capacity that you have on what you've learned to lead and how you've learned to disciple others. 
Um, was it like you were like a pastor's kid and like you came up from that, right? That's yeah. not how it all, yeah. cause they might see you and go, oh, that's amazing for you. <laughs> yeah. Cause you didn't go through nothing, <laughs> you know, but that wasn't always the story. Yeah. yeah. So where did you go? Like, how did, you know, where'd you come from? Yeah. Um, a background wasn't yeah. raised in church. Um, pretty much a normal life, just like anybody yeah. else. But early in my days, uh, we did music, um, DJ'd, made beats, stuff like that. Wow. And so always had that crowd around me and uh, pretty much just got lost in that crowd. Uh, yeah. Started experiment, uh, experimenting with drugs and smoking weed and stuff like that. Um, high school just got worse and worse. Um, but it was just that basic stuff that, you know, going out partying, um, stuff like that. But really where my life uh, took a turn was after I finished high school and mm -hmm. um, the the drugs, the alcohol just got worse and then um, ended up getting a prescription of Xanax from yeah. my doctor. Uh, somebody at work told me, this is all you have to say, you know, and you can get this and that. And so wow. I had health insurance at my job and so I was paying $25 for a doctor visit, $8 wow. for a prescription. That's crazy. And, um, you know, that's fast forwarding through a lot of the stuff, but really that's how through, I- Through a legal way, <laughs> you know, kind of, yeah. that's the crazy part, that's, yeah. that messed you up. Yeah, yeah. Right, so the- Constant supply from your doctor. Yeah. yeah. And so it was just pretty much that, and um, just the ongoing cycle, you know, I could fast forward 10 years, and yeah. I would just be telling you the same exact story. Sure. Life got crazy for me. Um, Pretty much, my son was nine years old. Uh, my now wife, then girlfriend, Sarah, she was just completely done with me. Yeah. And um, big shout out to Sarah, to, to the ladies, Sarah. Pastor Sarah, who who you know uh, uh, put up with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, holding it down since day holding one. Holding it down, yeah. yeah, that's pretty awesome. And uh, so my son Remy, nine months old, and um, pretty much an ultimatum. I have to go get help, and um, that's what I did. I went out to a rehab in Florida. And I went for like 17 days and mm. came back the same exact way. Wow. Yeah. Just really, now I had more of a mindset of what drugs do and what I'm looking for now. Mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah, yeah. When I got back to Texas, I was just looking for different stuff. Really, yeah. there was really no change. Wow, yeah. that's crazy, man. And so all of this happens, obviously, and now you have a passion. You, have a, you, have, you actually do this, you know, and I know you well, but I, I speak from a place so that they can know you a little mm -hmm. bit, right? And maybe, maybe I mean, because a lot of times people are listening to us through all kinds of different avenues, but even in this radio show, we reach a lot of prisons in Houston. So somebody might be in there and they might be listening and might, maybe they don't want to go home, you know? Maybe they're like, hey, I'm looking for a place. Is this a place they can go to after they get out? Like mm -hmm. they can, like maybe like they, I don't get high no more, but I know I still struggle yeah. and I need a place and I don't want to just go to a halfway house or something. Yeah. Can they go there? Is everybody alive? out there yeah. who can go there yeah really anybody who has who, who wants to change we highly recommend people coming out of prison you coming from that structured environment you always hear that prison faith that prison yeah, faith. yeah. it's a real thing you really do have real faith in prison it's sure. just the environment you mm -hmm. don't have the structure you don't have the accountability you don't have people there and now you're just wandering off in this free world now yeah so we highly recommend to transition our home is different than a halfway house it's not coming in and out you're there for six months surrounded uh by men of god to help you walk through these issues yeah, in yeah. life so coming out from prison or really whatever you're going through in your life coming into our home to really transition uh from prison or whatever it that's is really good before you go mm -hmm. back out yeah that's definitely. really cool and how did you get from you know you mentioned uh you were there for 17 days right then the, it didn't work you just went back to the same lifestyle when yeah. did your life change to where now you yeah. you have you know thankfully an organization where you're able to help those men so when did it change yeah, for you definitely so Crazy thing is this, when I left that rehab, I had mm -hmm. about $16, I think, to my name on wow. the way back. And so I'm flying, I'm coming back to Texas, and the lady, uh, the lady that gives out the coffee and the water, yeah, I yeah. can't think of the name, but. Stewardess. Yeah, stewardess, she's pushing this cart, and she ends up spilling some water, and it splashes on me. Mm -hmm. And she was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She goes, you can have whatever you want on this cart yeah. for the rest of the flight. Wow. And I was like, I'll take that right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I'm drinking on the way back to Texas, mm -hmm. coming from a rehab. Mm -hmm. And so it's just the mindset. It's just I really didn't want change. Mm -hmm. My life hit a, a, a vicious cycle. I understood what different, uh, you know, different pills, Oxycontin, heroin, stuff like that. So I touched down in Texas looking for these different types of mm -hmm. drugs. Um, somehow or another, I ended up experimenting with heroin. Mm -hmm. And once I got that first initial feeling of what it was, I was like, there's nothing else that I want. Wow. And so for the next two years, you know, that's what I did. Um, I was 
in our town, I was I was parked at a stop sign. Yeah. Really, my story, this one, I don't know the whole thing. I had to get other people to tell me. Uh, yeah. Because yeah. this was the first time um, I had a real bad um, encounter with the drugs. So I wake up, like, you know what people say, have you ever seen the light? You know, mm, did you ever see the yeah, light? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was. And they're like, don't follow the light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was crazy because it was pitch black and everything was, the light was coming in. Yeah, yeah. I really didn't understand what was taking place. Well, what happened is I overdosed and I was in the back of an ambulance and I was coming to my senses. Wow. And I look up and there's a paramedic, he's over me and they cut my sweater open. Oof. And I was looking, I was mad because they cut my polo sweater open. <laughs> <laughs> he's holding the defibrillators Oof. and they're saying, stay with me, stay with me. And the nurse, they're putting IV bags and yeah. different stuff. And so, <laughs> so mm -hmm. they, you know, they tell me, um, you know, what are you doing? What's your name? They say stuff like yeah. that. And so um, that was the first time that I overdosed. And um, hold that thought right there. Hold that thought right there. Stephanie got a little announcement. Here. Yeah. So before we get back into Pastor Ray's amazing story, I want to remind you all about Pastor Juan's new book, Beyond the Yellow Brick Road. And so what we're learning when we read that book and what you guys are able to discover is when you get to unlock the promises of God. And the amazing thing about this book is that not only whenever you read it, your life will be transformed. I firmly believe that because I read it myself. Um, but the amazing thing is that Pastor Juan's actually going to be giving away one book for every book that's purchased. So not only can you purchase it for yourself and gives it to a friend, even though the holidays are over, we still want to, you know, keep that self-improvement going for the new year. Um, but on his own pockets, which I can say Come that, on. right? Yeah, he's sure. going to be he's going to be giving one away. And so the goal is to reach all of right now. The goal is to reach all of the Texas state prisons. And so in order to do that, we've already partnered with prison ministries all around Texas. The number is one hundred and twenty five thousand one hundred and twenty four thousand one hundred and fifteen books. Mm -hmm. And so we need you to do that. The yeah. awesome thing is that the book is available at Juan Martinez TV. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it on Barnes and Noble. Anywhere books are sold, you can purchase beyond the yellow brick road and I guarantee you that your life will be transformed and we really want to be able to place this book into the hands of those who are incarcerated behind bars and incarcerated in their own minds here you know outside of those four walls um, because it's it's a truly life-changing and I keep saying that but I, I'm not I'm not saying it just to be cliche yeah, yeah, yeah. right sure it, it's something that affects whether you have the lifestyle that Pastor Juan used to live, or if you're like myself who, you know, didn't have those experiences with drug addiction or anything like that, it really brings you closer to your journey and your walk with God. And so be sure to support the ministry. We want to make sure that we want to reach that goal of 125. 24,115 books and you're able to partner with us and do it. So visit JuanMartinez.tv help us reach that goal and let us know what you think by writing a review. And here we are back with Ray Sandoval. Um, give us a little bit about what you were saying. You left off there where you they were cut up your sweater. You, yeah. This is where you're at. Come on, keep sharing. Yeah. So I'm in the back of an ambulance and pretty much coming back from a massive overdose. You know, they're hitting me with the defibrillators. Yeah. And um, I leave the hospital, you know, my family was there, everybody was mad at me, I'm trying to figure out, you know, what do you, what did you do? I'm trying to make something up because I really don't know why I'm there laying down in the hospital bed, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. not everything is there clicking yet. So I tell this story, I got these crazy mug shots, maybe we could put a link or something. Yeah, yeah that'd be cool. <laughs> That's it, they're yeah. incredible. Yeah. I saw that. The first time I overdosed, and so I always show those pictures, just kind of, you know, people see my life now, it's kind of hard for them to believe, but. yeah. So they, they hear that story, and they're so, so that was the first time that you overdosed. They say, is that when your life changed? I said, no, I actually overdosed six more times. Wow. And uh, I never felt like you just hit this rock bottom, or you, I always heard you, you have to hit rock bottom. And sure. uh, so I was always wondering, like, when is my rock bottom gonna come? Mm -hmm. And then I found out that whenever God is ready, that he is the rock, and you don't have to hit rock bottom, because yeah. I felt like I had a lot more in me. Yeah. <laughs> and, I can uh, keep going. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I felt like that. But then, you know, something clicked and um, somebody sent me a link to a men's home in Fort Worth. Wow. And um, that's I just, where you went. Yeah, I just knew something deep down in the inside of me. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to give this a shot. And um, I checked into the men's home the very next day. My mom took me. Unbelievable. And, uh, yep. That's unbelievable. So I finished that six month home, came back to Abilene. And uh, the church that we were at was getting a men's home started like that. So I was able to, to help them grow that ministry. And yeah, that's, that was incredible, too. You took that from the ground up. Yeah, that, that's how I knew you were gifted at it. You yeah. know, you, you took that from the ground up, really just led by by the word that you had in your heart from God, right? So it wasn't For like sure. 
you had this manual with you. You're like, this. you were literally like, when you say, oh, Holy Spirit led. Yeah. Okay, when I look back, I'm like, okay, this guy was Holy Spirit led. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. literally. So that was really cool. Like, now you've learned so much, right? Yeah. But it's funny because you started where you were. Mm-hmm. You know, so we're like, hey, yeah. start where you are. I feel like when we look at this, no clear prophetic vision, right? People are aimlessly and loosely, you know, wandering around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's kind of what the scripture we read. But I, when I'm looking at your life, um, you know, because I want you to touch a little bit on this on this as well. Mm-hmm. When I'm looking at your life. Um, then we're going to jump into some fun segments so we can learn more about Pastor Ray. For sure. You know, but uh, I feel like when I look at the scriptures, it really shows who, it, I mean, literally practically you could see the scripture in your life because here you get to a place you've never done it before sometimes i feel like the more we learn sometimes it gets you know it messes with us because here you were a moment where we would say you know nothing but you had a prophetic vision you you could see from the word and it was directing every single step and it was successful yes it was successful like how many men you had at that home i mean i mean how many men throughout the the, the, I would life say the, of the, career, program. the life of the program. Uh, 500 guys. Over 500. 500 guys you discipled and helped with the team. Yeah. Yes, sir. To be free from drugs. That's yes. Awesome. That's incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. Just being led through the Word of God. And then today, here you know all this coaching stuff. Here you know. So, what would you say to somebody that when we talk about the term start where you are and we use that scripture? I know we talked a little bit about it earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, share a little bit. Uh, from that starting where you are like mm-hmm. what does that mean to you when you hear that start where you are yeah. you know with the scripture it's Proverbs 28 19. so when I finished that men's home I had no idea what I was going to do for the rest of my life yeah getting a job was going to be difficult the criminal history the right. background you know I wasn't going <laughs> to sure. pass all that but I also know this is what I know now um, been saved six months and yeah. instead of waiting for all these opportunities to come or you know, sometimes you, you pray about it, but there's other times that God, you already prayed about it. It's just time to jump in. Yeah, you know, yeah, opportunity yeah. came. I started where I was. There wasn't a whole lot. Jumped. I always say this. If I went all out in the world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now that I'm saved, why do we want to lose that same mentality? <laughs> yeah, because sometimes we get into the thought process of like, oh, well, you know, maybe let me go to school for this long. Yeah. Nothing wrong with school, but like sure, you know, sure, sure. saying from where your story was, okay, cool. I graduated the program, but, you know, I may not be qualified just yet. So they offer you this and you're like, no, yeah. I'm not so sure. But yeah. you said, you know, let's, let's go. Let's jump on it. Yeah. yeah. We went to school later on. Yeah. You know, I started off in the ministry and then I went to college. Right. That's ten, amazing. Yeah. Ten years. And, and that's life. really the word faith, right? Yeah. Like on the cool, like we use that word. But I don't believe people have really tapped into that word because to me, when I think about faith, I think about divine persuasion, right? So there's, even though you don't know, you're being moved, you know, we call it the wind or the spirit of God, right? You're being moved because you believe, even though you can't see it, the direction that you, you get what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I feel like that's what you did. Yeah. Like, even though you, you didn't know, you, we could go scripture here because you didn't lean on what you understood. Yeah. You trusted in him. You yep. trusted in him. You didn't lean on what you understand. And I feel like for us to start where we are, we have to stop leaning on what we understand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like you and him can't kind of like, you know, you can't kick it together. Like you, you almost got to unlearn to relearn. And that's the born again experience. For sure. Yeah. Right. And that's when you really step into the faith world. Mm-hmm. And that's when you really get manifestations of heaven. Mm-hmm. Right. Do you agree with that? Do yeah. you guys, yeah. are you vibing with me? Talk yeah, to no, me. Well, I mean, the start where you are, I feel like it's never something like we always have to do it again and again, because even when you started that way, but then you had more opportunities later yeah. on in life. Right. Because mm-hmm. it's like, OK, great. I started here and now I've, you know, have a men's home, a successful men's home. Yeah. And then you were sharing with us earlier that then you, so, suddenly you become called to be a pastor. Yeah. And so you start being a pastor of a church that you had never done before yeah. either and that looks completely different than being a director of a home correct yeah. you know yeah, so yeah, you yeah. share with us a little bit how, how you have to start where you are in that and how did you I transition find, yeah, yeah i find myself back at square one what i learned is like sometimes what was deep the deep end of the pool in one season becomes the shallow end of the pool fact mm-hmm. and That's so good. coming out of that men's home and then getting ready to start another men's home or go into it it was all in i don't know how to do this but i know god is calling me to do this so it's time to just jump in mm. so then i felt like i was at a comfortable place running that men's home running that nonprofit. i felt like i figured it out everything was okay i 401k got it got everything that I, you know, was wanting, but then yeah. that, that got easy, that got safe. But I've always learned that God isn't in the safe. He's not always in the easy, in the comfortable. Yeah. There was really no other place for me to, there was nowhere for me to grow. At the end of the day, 
And I wanted to keep continuing um, the passion, the vision to reach the lost. I never wanted to be a senior pastor. I never, I never uh, thought about that and said, you know what? I just want to launch a church one day. That's not really what it was. <laughs> I just wanted to help the guys. Yeah. It's easy. Yeah. The men's home is like, this is what I want to do. But what God wants to do and what you want to do is That's a different thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so it's just, you know, my prayer life, everything just started feeling like I, something was missing. Something was missing. Mm -hmm. And um, and I knew, I, you know, I closed my eyes and I could see myself preaching, literally. And I've always preached everywhere, you know. And so, but this time it was different. I knew that it was my own church right. and that God was calling me to, to launch a church. And mm -hmm. so we uh, we started looking for a building. We found a nightclub, two-story nightclub. And uh leased it and got started 60 days later we opened up the church that's wow. unbelievable yeah. i think it's unbelievable I, I you know big shout outs to you you know i actually would like to do like i'd like to bring you on for like a couple of weeks and kind of just uh really talk about discipleship and just really get into like some good hardcore messages you know mm -hmm. um right now i just kind of want to introduce you to the planet yeah, you know but uh, i really would like to kind of get him in sometime steph and mm -hmm. you know or miss rave you know i would like to get him in here and uh just really talk about these topics because I believe you have so much insight and uh, it's beautiful because I, I, I truly believe like we there's a bunch of people like hey I know but they ain't, they ain't living it you know so it's, mm -hmm. I always say I don't know where this came from G.I. Joe maybe something that said knowing is half the battle you know but <laughs> there's like a and it is yeah. and I feel like there's it's it sucks when you know and you don't live it but I feel like for you you're applying what you know according to the word of God and so therefore you have this wisdom based upon the experience you've encountered God with and that's what makes it so beautiful it's not just out of a textbook you follow me yeah, yeah. like sure. I think there's a big difference there yeah. right because you can know a lot and yet not really live it and mm -hmm. then your life disconnects from what you know and it doesn't look the same yeah. but that's not for you when we're talking about mm -hmm. Pastor Ray Sandoval you can literally see the application of the word because when you look at a picture of what he looked like yeah. oh we, we're definitely going to post one of yeah. those you know it, it just looks crazy you look like like straight up zombie apocalypse bro like you're like yeah. dying you know you're like dying literally <laughs> yeah. 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 like literally. now you look so yeah. good mm -hmm. and so you know what we're going to just jump into some fun stuff because I believe there's a lot of there, we could stay all day uh, talking about those things. But before we jump into some of this fun stuff, I want you to talk a little bit about what uh, just basically like you have a commercial spot right now to talk about Rise Discipleship, what it does, how long it is, what it deals with, and then where can they access Rise Discipleship? Yep, Rise Home. Oh, dot, Rise Home. Yeah, risehome.org is the website, so you can go there. But it's a it's a men's home. We have an eleven thousand square foot facility, wow. and we can house up to a hundred guys, probably over a hundred guys. We have about sixty right now. Nice. And um, all you have to do is just get to the intake process, answer a few questions, talk to them, and it's just a matter of getting there. You know, I think that's the the hardest part is just getting there, going mm -hmm. through the mind battle. Is this for me? Is this is there a phone number you? or something like in case? Yeah, everything's on Rise Home. Everything's on Rise Home. Okay. Yeah, just get there. There's intake form. You can fill it all out right there. <clears throat> yeah. That's the biggest battle is, is wondering and what if and what if I did this and what if not. Just just get there. Get, yeah, get yeah. on the phone. Start contact, where you are. Exactly. Make the call. And just yeah. get there. Yep. That's yes, awesome. Sir. And what could they expect from going there? Yeah, so it's going to be a home with a bunch of other guys. You got leaders. You got accountability. Nice. Uh, every day we got prayer, praise, and worship. We got Bible studies. The guys go out fundraising. We have a wood shop. You know, uh, We make crosses and stuff like that where we yeah. go out. So you're going to learn a lot. Um, there's just... Every day is going to be the same as far as the Bible studies, the prayer, praise, and worship. Sure. But we're always doing something different. What could they experience in their own personal life, right? Because right now they're yeah. stuck, probably depressed. Um, just, yeah. you know, you've been battling. there, right? Yeah. They're battling. When you think everything is over and you find out that it's not, that God still has a plan for you. He has a purpose for you. And no matter how old you are, I've seen God use people 60, 70 years old yeah. and still transform their life mm -hmm. and they make reconnections with their kids and, and wow. restore a marriage when whole you, family when mm -hmm. you thought it was over um god's yeah. still working man that that's beautiful right because yeah. why wait and get high again or whatever your problem is because it's not just a drug addiction thing it's yeah. just any addiction or anything life. you want to just start life you're mm -hmm. like hey yeah. i want to start right now and i don't know how yeah mm -hmm. and i feel like i don't have an answer your answer just came through the radio and literally you have an opportunity to say happy new year for real for the first time yeah. right rather than happy same year because think about if people really 
You know, yeah. these old people stay saying happy same year, you know, it would be kind of funny, but it wouldn't be, Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. you know? Yeah, I think the importance of, the, of, you know, the topic that we're saying, start where you are. I hear it so much, uh, you know, whenever, because we have phone calls also, you know, coming yeah. into the church ministry or, you know, people that we yeah. encounter, that it's like, hey, you know, do you know anywhere that, you know, this guy can go to or something like that? And then you hear all of the, well, you know, I got to get this job first because, you yeah, know, yeah. My, the list of my, mom, my, yeah. my baby mama's at home and I got to take care of the kids. What do you or, say to that? You know, because, yeah, go ahead. Yeah got to pay these pawn tickets yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where are you going with this well well i'm saying yeah the importance of start where you are and why it correlates to me with you know the rise yeah. home is that it doesn't matter what it looks like again that that fear factor of stepping out into faith is just doing it yeah right dun, dun, once dun. you do it it becomes not that it becomes easier but the more that you practice it the better that you are at it well you start persevering yeah. and enduring you but become you stronger yeah you're what, not uh, able to be there until you actually start you know so fact. it's like i you know some men that may be hearing this and they're like oh yeah i gotta do that but first i gotta handle this ticket or this court case or this yeah. that it's like yeah. no forget all of that well that's really the you know it's funny like when you said comfort i i actually i see comfort from a different perspective and I think we we've taken the word comfort and we've made it yeah we've made it almost like what we understand comfort to be like this blanket and it, yes in a sense that is that but I believe when we're talking to the things of God I, see making that list of excuses that list of excuses is because you want to go th- back to what's familiar to you and what you do all the time and i believe that's the true definition of comfort it's like the thing you do all the time and now all of a sudden because you know even in in the church world you know we also think that oh you know we're just going to be like on this thing but not really because when let's say when you went into the promised land and you had to face these giants and you had to it might feel uncomfortable the comfort is in knowing that you're mm-hmm. walking out these things that are helping you grow yeah you follow me mm-hmm. like when you go to the gym that's not like oh yeah. until you start seeing some results mm-hmm. but there, the comfort there is that you know you're getting healthier you know mm-hmm. and i feel like sometimes that list yeah is really our a bunch of comforts that we don't want to shake up you know yeah. and as to start new it's you the have perspective to shake it up. of it right yeah. because like you said you mentioned the gym you can be you could be working out and you're not comfortable doing it but you know that you're going to it's get right results thing. and so that is what comforts you, yeah. you sure know? same thing with sure. you know the home it's like you're gonna be uncomfortable for a while but you were as uncomfortable when you, like you <laughs> like you shared you know when you were getting overdosed and yeah. you know oh, pulled yeah. out of the ambulance and all sorts of stuff so yeah because even like think about when you were doing the training with our team mm-hmm. right which thank you so much that was mm-hmm. like so enlightening if you so you know, as Ray does it all, so you just get at him. <laughs> but uh, let's say you can find him, Ray Sandoval, uh, Rise Church. You know, uh, I vouch for him. I, a stamp of approval from this mm-hmm. is real. But you know, it was so it was awesome. But like, just look at that day. Yeah. So he's you know training us on certain things. He's talking about us, you know, setting up some systems. And the reality is that by the end of the day, mm-hmm. you begin to feel like uncomfortable, right? Like yeah. you're like, oh, because it's this new thing. Yeah. And so you're like. You you were so excited about like what it was, mm-hmm. and when you started getting into the details of things, after a while, it doesn't matter who you were. When you look around the yeah. room, there's kind of like a yeah, yawn, and like, then there's oh. like a, you know, like I don't know if I could do this, and mm-hmm. should we even do this? Because you really want to revert. Let's be real. Ah, oh, writing it on paper wasn't that bad, or doing it like this wasn't that bad. <laughs> we'll be because you don't want to move forward. <laughs> yeah, you. The, the yeah. truth is that there's that moment where you're like, oh, but the reality mm-hmm. is that we talk a lot about process to a promise. Yeah. And that, even in that, Mm -hmm. there's gonna have to be like, you know, six months in, you know, when you're in. And then all of a sudden, you forget how you felt and it becomes great. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the story of life, right? Because we don't, we're like, oh, I don't know, I can't really see it. And it seems so hard that now there's a giant in the land and so you revert back. Yeah. You're like, ah, oh, no. That. But at some point you grew so much that that didn't even become you know, difficult for you. It didn't become you know, a stretch and then you have to move on to the next level. Yes. <laughs> you yes, continue, yes, yes, that's yes, what yes. I mean. It starts all over again. And yeah, it starts, it starts all over, all over yeah. again. And you're really into that. You like facing the giant. You're going to like this, ra- you, listen, let me tell you something. His, his <laughs> that's staff, the record show. <laughs> staff, please do not do this to me, but his staff did something to you here recently, right? Uh, they signed you up for something that you had no knowledge of, and now you're in it, was right? The Spartan race? Yeah. The Spartan Oh, yeah. oh the, yeah. the coming the, in hot challenge? No, the Spartan race. Wasn't oh, Spartan it the Spartans? Yeah. 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 So what is the Spartan race? They they signed him up yeah. without him knowing, and it now was, he's... It was one, uh, the gym owner. The yeah. gym owner. Yeah, the gym owner. He's a, he's a uh, church, Abe Wazer, yeah. Uh, wow. Aesthetics. He, uh, 
he was like, do you want to do a Spartan race? And I was like, what is it? And he was like, what's your email? And uh, so he signed you up. Yeah, he was. <laughs> so like, now you're running. Yeah, I just signed you up. Yeah, so it's like 20 wow. of us going now. But sometimes you need that little push because little it's push. a. It's a 10K or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's six, six miles. I would have never obstacle courses. I would have never said, but sometimes you have somebody else that, knows, that sees it in you. That knows you can do it. Mm -hmm. And with their help, they can push you to get there. But I would have never signed myself up. Yeah. It's the same. But now thing. that you're in, you're like, yeah. Let's get it. Yeah, you like it. <laughs> yeah. I, I love that about yeah. you. Yeah. I you like know. that you said that with, with their help, right? Because sometimes yeah. people who may be listening right now, that's like, oh, that's fine, you know, but when I come out, it's going to be good. And, yeah. you know, I got this. I don't really need no help from nobody. I don't need a home, then, mm. you know, that kind of thing. But no, like, yeah. we all need each other, you know. And yes. as the body of Christ, whether you're incarcerated or you're out, you know, listening in the in the car, like, we need one another. We need to be connected. And sometimes, like you mentioned, we do need that push from somebody else to say, hey, you know what? I want to grow in this area of my life. I'm going to start where I'm at, where, you know, my capacity is or wherever yeah. that level is Fact. and I need you to come alongside me and help me and hold yeah. me accountable to it. We so. all need somebody. Come on. Come on. I mean, hey, here, yes, you know, let's jump into the fun stuff. Let's <laughs> jump right. into the fun stuff. Let's Stephanie, kick it off what with, are we going to do first? Uh, first, let's start off with Dear Younger Me. Dear Younger Pastor Me. Pastor Juan's going to hit us with it. <laughs> He's going <laughs> to bring so it back. <laughs> <laughs> this is so good. Hey, you know, big shout out. Big shout out to Marco, the media guy <laughs> who is probably <laughs> laughing. Um, <laughs> but, you know, so here it is, and one day we'll share the story. But you know what? Dear younger me, man, I want you to think about Back to the Future. I want you to think about the DeLorean, and Stephanie pops out with the white hair. And then all of a sudden, she's like, jump in the car, and you could pick whatever year you want to go back to. You know, because we do that a lot. Mm -hmm. I feel like, I think we've all had, I mean, I know in Christianity especially, like, you yeah. think, man, you ever had the thought where you go, if I was younger, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I would definitely not do yeah. this. Okay, so here's your opportunity. And we think this is a very important thing because somebody might be listening on the line and uh, might be younger or mm -hmm. might gain from the wisdom that you've seen. So exactly. what age would you go to? And what were you doing? Like, I want you to take us there. Where were you? How old were you? How old were you? Where were you at? What were mm -hmm. you doing? What did your mm -hmm. life look like? And what would you tell your younger version of Pastor Ray? I would probably start in the ministry life. Okay. Because really? Because <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. What age? What age? 25. 25. Ooh. So you go back 25. Where are you at? Uh, just leaving the home. Mm. Just, just leaving, leaving the, the home. home. Okay. Let, let me tell you why. Because I would have, under normal circumstances and answering this, I would have went to 15. Because mm -hmm. 15 to 25 is when I was doing drugs. Yeah. Right. But so I, you would have you got, yeah, you, yeah, hey, wait, hold on a minute. You still want to, you still want that part? <laughs> he's like, he's like, you he's know, like I, I'm not going to go back to that like, one. <laughs> he's like, I had, little, I had a little fun in high school and I really didn't <laughs> want to change that fun. <laughs> you know? I'm going to change ministry. <laughs> you know? I'm going to change ministry because I know wow. I made it at 25. Yeah. I didn't die. Yeah. I didn't die. I'm so go I'll go here because I know <laughs> that's funny. No. But go ahead. 25 years old. I want to tell you why, though. It's because. If it wasn't for those experiences that I went through, mm -hmm. I would never know how to help the guys that I help now. Wow. I thank God that I know he would have never put me on drugs, but I thank God he saw me all the way through. That's yeah. From, from coming out of heroin addiction, the, the feeling of withdrawing, because when there's a guy who comes into our home and he's withdrawn off of heroin, whenever I look at him, I know exactly what he's feeling. I know exactly what he's going through his mind. Yeah. He's feeling endless. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes I knew that. I knew that I was going to die in my either it's going to be from this a drug overdose or a drug related incident a yeah. robbery getting yeah. shot so, but as long as I was high I was okay with it mm. however I died sure but now I know it, it had to happen I know God used all those experiences and I made it out but coming into the to the Christian world get, getting saved and understanding God's plan is Back then, I didn't really care about much other than uh, getting 20, high. Uh, okay, yeah, getting high. Uh -huh. 15 to 25. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm, I'm getting saved. Uh, I wish, I mean, going back, I would have told myself to 25. Fight. Where are you at? Yeah. You're leaving. You're, you're leaving on your the, way to Abilene. Yeah. And so you pop up. Here I am okay. with, with my bags about to start in ministry. And what do you say? I would have told myself to find out who you really are, mm -hmm. the real you. Mm -hmm. I would have, if I. Well, the real Ray Sandoval, <laughs> please, please stand, stand up. up. Yeah. Come on. We just did this training, you know, three different types of personalities with yeah. the staff. And it's we're on the other side of it trying to find out who we are. We know who we are, but the quicker we understand how God <laughs> wired us is the quicker that we can be okay in our own skin. Not to compare ourselves to other leaders and other pastors and feel 
discouraged because we're not like them, yeah. but understand that God, you created me to be this guy, and mm. I'm gonna be the very best version of me the way that you created me. We yeah. can do the same things, but we're two different people. I idolize on accident. I looked up to people so much that I try to be every aspect mm -hmm. of their life, and it really just doesn't good. work. It's crazy how like grand and you know infinite God is, and then the word says that He made us in His likeness and His image, but then we think that we all have to look one way. Yeah. It's like what? No, like He made each of us so designed powerful. uniquely, you know, specifically. Like not all. You may you know we joke about like yeah, yeah. oh man that's your doppelganger. Oh you know that yeah, person's yeah. you. Yeah. But really is like you said finding out who how God designed you specifically, right? Because there's no other Ray Sandoval on earth. There's no other Juan Martinez. There's no mm. other Stephanie Ray. You Praise know. So God. I think that's awesome. <laughs> I'm like. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. It makes you feel mm -hmm. good. I, I, you know, I, I think it's truly important. I think when you, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm, you know, they say, you know, doctor love, right? So I love marriage stuff. You know, I, I'm very passionate about marriage because I truly believe that in your home, that's actually your greatest disciple of all time. I feel like me and my wife, like she knows the real Ray, right? And, you know, and you know your wife, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like in those moments, you know, that's how come sometimes there's not a lot of change out here because really there's no change in that home. For sure. You know, so I feel like when you really almost, when I, with Ruthie, when I began to like accept her difference mm -hmm. and learn to work with that, yeah, man, that became so good. Now take that past my home because I've learned it there. You know how to operate with my, you know, my son's different and this person's different. Mm -hmm. And you try to like learn how to work the the body mm -hmm. in uh, of Martinez family. It's the same way that God wants us to be in the body of Christ. The problem is that most of the time we think that th let's say a hand and a wrist and a forearm, they are all different body parts, but they all have to be connected in order to work the purpose. Function, mm -hmm. You know, right. to function correctly. Mm -hmm. Now the problem is that this hand and this wrist or this hand and this forearm probably think completely different. Right. This guy's like, I just, or let's say the hand and the foot, right? I just want to pick stuff up and the other guys, I just want to put shoes on. And, and so that's where the, the, the confrontation happens. Mm -hmm. But when they understand that, you yeah, I'm gonna put the shoe, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna put the shoe on and you're gonna pick up the bacon yeah. and you know, yeah. for breakfast. And then it, it's almost like this, this light bulb. It, yeah, light bulb moment of, man, I need you. Mm -hmm. Cause I can't get there. This hand can't get there. Mm -hmm. You know, unless you're like thing from the, you know, <laughs> you know, but you really can't get there. And I think we have to really understand, like, I need you. You need me and I need you. Yeah. And we need Marco. You mm -hmm. know, like, like we need to make this show happen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and we need the radio station people. Like, they, we need everybody to yeah. be interconnected. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's important. I think yeah. it's, you know, what I was going to say is, you know, I came here for a staff training and to put your staff on what we've been learning here. Yeah. But what they don't, what we haven't mentioned is that you're going to my church in August for a leadership conference. Yeah. To help on the area that we're weak. And yeah. so we have to be vulnerable, share where we are. Fact. Mm -hmm. And where that's our really weakness good. is. And then we can partner up and I'm going to come over here, help your staff here. I'm like, that's in back. August, not February? <laughs> oh, February. <laughs> February, February. Sorry. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> we're doing calendar <laughs> like, on air. Right. <laughs> let's get into the next segment. <laughs> let's get into the next segment. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a, <laughs> this is awesome, though. Hey, we had to correct that because we yeah, don't want somebody yeah. going, hey, we're going to go to Rise in August. Like, yeah. I'm like, yo, gonna be there February. In yeah. February, no, February. February. Yeah, it's going to be cool. <laughs> yeah. So the next one we're going to uh, kick off with Pastor Ray, we like to call it, the struggle was real. Ooh, so basically, real. we like to, we always like to hear the, or say the phrase, like, man, the struggle's real. I'm going through a struggle right now, right? Damn. We say that all the time. Struggle, um, yeah. But as a part of this is real, us, you know, keeping it real, being transparent. Mm -hmm. We want you to share, Pastor Ray, um, something that you struggled with. And it could be, like, it could be ministry. It could be back then. And, and, and you got to keep it real. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because like, there's people listening yeah, and they can, man, they, we like, need them to relate, right? How we, you know, when, when you're the blood of the lamb, we overcome the blood of the lamb, the word oh of our testimony, right? And I feel yeah. like sometimes people are like, they, yeah. they just like real, like, well, there was that one time yeah. and they don't really want to like, Bleh. and I know that's not you, but you know, we got to give our listeners yeah. like the real. Mm -hmm. The real, you yeah, know? Yeah, because you might hear the churchy, okay. oh, pastor this, pastor that, but really, like, you guys are real people. You struggle mm -hmm. with real things. Because mm -hmm. somebody's going to overcome because of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then share with us how you overcame it so that we can give them, you know, tangible tools yeah. for it. So give us the, ugh, and Hit then us. give us the overcoming <laughs> word. Come All on. Right. I would have, I feel like, when I said, if I can go back and find the real me, yeah. the reason why, from that age 15 to 25, 
ended up on drugs is because I didn't know me and I was always trying to be somebody else. Mm. People pleasing, trying yeah. to, to become like the rappers, trying to become like them. I wasn't comfortable in my own skin because wow. I never mm. really knew who I was. Mm -hmm. I had an identity crisis yeah. my whole entire life. The only way I could become the person that I wanted to be in my mind was get there fictitiously in my mind with a drug, with a substance. Because whenever I was leaning or faded or whatever you want to yeah. call it, I was there in my mind. But the moment that I sobered up, I wasn't comfortable with who I was looking mm. in the mirror. Mm. So becoming the person who I what the, the struggle was being okay with who I was. But not knowing Christ, not knowing my identity um, made that extremely hard. All right, but let's fast forward and take it to the church world. <laughs> Come on. Ah, okay. hey, it, hey, 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 come on. Hit it. But just because you get saved. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> we got two preachers on the air, guys. Go, it's, about go. Go. it's about to get real churchy. It's about to get real churchy. I need some pads in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, and I, that, that. And I close with this. Yeah. <laughs> like, come on. Jeez. Okay, how'd you All overcome right. it? Didn't. Didn't check this out. Let me tell you. You didn't. No, you're still struggling. No one. I got today saved. we can help you. Oh, <laughs> go rise home. Yeah. We know of a disciple. <laughs> you know of a <laughs> but I want to say this. Yeah. Just because you get saved, don't think that all your problems just magically get fixed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're still working these things out. Because Fact. Yeah. The kid who was having an identity crisis that ended up on drugs. Now here I am trying to start a church. And with an identity crisis, but still had the identity crisis because I was so sick and tired of three piece suits and ties and cufflinks that whenever I started church, this is what it's going to be. If I want to rock J's and rip jeans and, and all this, you can, I can. And that's all I wanted to do. But is everybody else going to be OK? Right. But, yeah. yeah, yeah and I, I really didn't care. We had yeah. the music guys. Yeah, we, yeah. It, that's who we are. But then the time that I had some guys who came from the corporate world or the business world and they were wearing dress shoes and they're not my age. I started to second guess all over again, should I wear this or should I not? Back in the day, I was putting on three-piece suits and ties trying to impress somebody, and now here I am not wondering, or wondering, should I wear my J's or should I wear my dress shoes? Why? Mm -hmm. Because another person that was in the audience, and I found out that that 15-year-old that was having that identity crisis, I'm doing it all over again at 30, mm -hmm. until I just became comfortable with who I am, dressed the way I want to dress. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Sure. This is who I am. Until I could get comfortable with me and my own skin, I was never going to be comfortable around anybody. Mm -hmm. Wow. So it was just re replaying that all over again. So just really finding out who I am, being comfortable with the way that God made me. And uh, how'd you, like, you overcome that though? How'd you how'd you get to that place? You follow me? Yeah. Because somebody's like, "That's me. Yeah. That's me right now." Yeah. Okay. What's the answer yeah. for that? Like, mm -hmm. uh, what you know? Because James says mm -hmm. that uh, that we're to receive the implanted word which is able to save our soul, which is what you're saying, yeah. right? Because just because you get saved, it still takes a lifetime. It's a progressive state from faith to faith, glory to glory. It's a progressive state. How did you get from yeah. that to where you're at now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mentally, like what yeah. would be the mental progressive state? I had to find out that I'm not going to please everybody. Not everybody's nice. going to stay at the church. Not everybody's going to be on the team. I had to be okay with not making everybody happy. Mm -hmm. Wow. At the end of the day, when you finally make everybody happy, there's going to be two people that aren't happy, God and you. Yeah. Wow, wow, I, wow. I had to be okay with not pleasing everybody. And if and if you don't like me for the real me, then wow. there's really nothing we can do. And that would it. probably be something that we consistently... Oh, right? Like, I feel like everything, like, even the stuff that we overcome, like, it's funny that you say, like, hey, you know, at this level, because I feel the same thing. Like, deep water becomes lower. I feel like a, I feel like a lot of times when we're young, like, <sighs> okay, so maturity levels, you know, and I feel like, you know, I'm saying feel like a lot, but <laughs> maturity levels, when you're, let's say, 20 and you're saved and you're working on stuff, um, you might be speaking from a place that you are because sometimes what we do is we want to like no that's wrong but the reality is that at that moment that's where they're at and if they're progressively moving forward you've probably progressed and moved already but you get what I'm saying like mm -hmm. at that moment they are right they're just right at that maturity level so yeah. they could speak to all the people that are at that level and make it makes sense yeah somebody comes that's like you know let's say you're like eighth grade and the other one's 11 yeah or, or a senior. i was just about to say yeah. you use the school reference a lot where it's like okay you know you may have like a you know fifth grader who's a great reader 
right? Yeah. It's because he reads great at his fifth grade level. Yeah. And you have a senior who's a great reader. Neither of them are wrong. They're both just at that They're level. Right. Yeah. You know? And this guy's like, well, have you tried audiobooks? But the fifth <laughs> grade is like, audiobooks? You know? Yeah. Like, like I, I feel like we have to see from that place. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that helps you, too, because if I'm in fifth grade, and this is, I believe, the problem in the body of Christ, right? Let's say, let's say I'm a, I'm a uh, spiritually. Right. I, um, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna be the fifth grade guy. So I'm in the fifth grade, and you are in the ninth grade, and Stephanie is married with kids out of college, right? What happens is if y'all make me feel like I need to be where you're at today, mm -hmm. that's gonna frustrate me. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah. go crazy because. Uh, you're not letting me enjoy my fifth grade yeah. or my eighth grade. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I believe that that's the frustrating factor. Mm -hmm. You know, and we even have to be. I even have to be okay with being in the fifth grade because mm -hmm. I could start looking at you and going, "Why am I not driving yet? Great, yeah. you know, life is horrible." Mm -hmm. From a spiritual place, it's the same thing because I, maybe I can't go as deep in the word or I don't know how to connect things yet because I've only just started reading, you know, in the fifth grade. So I Galatians a little bit here and I'm surface level and I hear you preach a message and something yeah. and I'm like, oh my God, y'all getting what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, because uh, like you were sharing, Pastor Ray, that you, 25 years saved, you realized this identity crisis that you had as a young person. But then, you know, fast forward in your ministry, you still, still had that identity crisis that you thought you dealt with, but you didn't deal with. And I feel mm, like sometimes mm. we do that uh, you know, to new believers where yeah. we don't really allow them to be at the level that they're at. Yes. And then we want to compare them to someone. And so instead of being so like, you know, rewind. And if I was that new believer, I'm not going to try to be vulnerable and say, oh, man, you know, y'all, I really don't understand it when we get this deep in Bible study. But I'm yeah. going to just continue to go and pretend and yeah. say amen and yeah. just play the role instead of allowing you to be at the level where you're at. You yeah. Know? So it's both sides because. And and even, you know, looking at it further, like sometimes we see the suits as a bad thing at that mm -hmm. moment because obviously you've recognized what the problem was. Mm -hmm. But God uses all things, right? So those things might have, I think, because when you were in your suits and all that, it probably broke you from some things that you probably, you know, it, mm -hmm. it helps in some form or fashion, even if you can't see it. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's cool, too, that God would still use everything you went through yeah. and still serve it as a purpose. It had to yeah. happen. That's yeah. what I always say. It had to happen every step of the process. Yeah, that's, that's why cool. start where you are applies to everyone, no matter yeah. what walk of life you are. Just continue, right? Like Get started. we see it in, in you know our church as well, where there's people that are learning and they're you know 50, 60 years old, and there's people who, like myself who I was raised in church and I consider myself a believer my entire life, but there's so yeah. much more maturity that I have now versus what you know I thought I had before. If you sat, if you put someone, you know, to females age the same you know me yeah. next to somebody else you would think that i would be more spiritually mature but in the end you know it's it's where i was at yeah that's cool mm -hmm. that's really cool man and in case you just tuned in man we're talking to pastor ray sandoval from abilene texas rise church uh they have a discipleship home for men uh, it's just unbelievable they can go to rise, rise church online.org to catch all your services, but they to get to the home, where do they go? Rise Home. Rise home .org. org. Mm -hmm. And that place is incredible. It's mm -hmm. changing lives day by day. So if you're out there and you're listening and you're like, man, you know what's 2021? I'm tired mm -hmm. and I just want change. Yeah, we've had guys come into the home that never did drugs or alcohol. They just knew that there was something more. Just yeah. One guy just said his pride. It was his sin. Just always doing, always being successful. Wow. But just knowing that God wanted to call him to a deeper mm -hmm. relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so good. Because it, it, like... People hear discipleship home and they do think straight to Automatic. addictions, mm -hmm. right? And then it's like, no, I don't need one of that. I'm yeah. good. This and this and that. But no, like, you, sh whatever you struggle with by yourself, you're going to continue to carry that with you everywhere that you go. If you don't like confront it, if you don't acknowledge it, if you don't allow people to come alongside you to help you to build you up, to see you when you fall, to pick you up, all of that. So you know, it's That's super it's amazing. Yeah. I love it, Pastor Ray. Let me tell you something. It's 2021. Um, we got about. Uh, two minutes here and um, I want you to kind of talk to somebody out there um, struggled with identity struggle too. with identity struggle you know just whatever God puts in your heart right now yeah. um, you know it was cool to see you the other day just eating chilling and all of a sudden boom you kick he did the, the what we do when we go you know other places he just kind of looked at the girl and he's like 
prayer before you know it, she's falling apart and mm. he's like i just felt like god and yeah, so yeah, it was yeah. so cool to see you ministering i mean i i, I just love that stuff mm-hmm. and i know you do too yeah. you know just see you ministering and really feeling that need and that's kind of what i want you to do right now because yeah. somebody's listening letting god use like, you they've heard everything mm-hmm. and now they're at a place where they maybe help them see i think going back to what you said start where you are yeah. is for everybody to remember you're not going to be where somebody else is be okay with where you are with who you are yeah and then go on a hunt i mean Mm. everything inside of you to find out how god wired you why you are the way that you are and just become determined to become the best version of you like 2020 was crazy yeah 2020 Mm -hmm. was allowed this you know our our theme is coming in hot for this challenge that we're doing but it's just pretty much saying you know what 2020 was crazy but i'm going to be the best version of me in this 2021 find out what are your fears what motivates you uh how are you wired find out all of that stuff because the more that you know about you the better the, the better mm. version of you the best you're going to be for everybody mm-hmm. else around you mm-hmm. so. that's so good man that's yeah. so good and what if somebody's like hey man i'm scared yeah like I'm scared. I hear you. The fear yeah. right before making that decision of starting, you know, because we've all faced it, you know. But Talk to me. You got one minute. Definitely overcome it. Um, be afraid and still do it. I okay. think we're all going to be afraid. We're going to be fearful. Um, we're all going to make mistakes. For every person that's thinking like, you know what, what if I mess up? What if I make a mistake? That's why I make mistakes. I make mistakes. We still mess stuff up. Mm-hmm. We're still not perfect. The most important thing is start where you are. Get started. Get surrounded with some godly people mm-hmm. that can help you on this journey you can't do it alone um and just get moving forward man that's really cool thank you so much pastor ray for being with us on this thank is you. real it's always a pleasure you know what uh, i'm gonna end it with the scripture again when there is no clear prophetic vision people quickly wander astray but when you follow the revelation of the word heaven's bliss fills your soul and i know right now like pastor ray said 2020 was kind of crazy and maybe you're wandering around aimlessly and you're kind of astray and you're lost and you don't know which way to go and you know starting where you are uh you have to say the first thing you have to do any gps is really know where you are before you know where you're going to go and sometimes you need those people around you and so clear prophetic vision means a clear word from god and so if you don't know what that is he's probably talking to you right now and maybe you just need somebody to reach out and say hey you know what this is where you need to go Juan Martinez from This Is Real. And I'm Stephanie Rave, and we're so glad you joined us. If you enjoyed the show, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and turn on your notification bell so you get notified every single time we have a new episode. And don't forget, in Houston, Texas, on 100.7 FM, every single Saturday night, we're on the airwaves from 6.30 to 7.30, man, with real people, real problems, real solutions. The show is rocking. Amen. But not only that, not only is the show rocking, we're also reaching 53 cities 51 state and county jails and prisons and what we're doing is we're bringing the word to them we're bringing them some laughter and some good times and some fire and so uh for that we need some partners so if you want to partner with us please click on the link below and don't forget to follow us on social media hashtag this is real or on any other platforms pastor juan martinez hey that's a wrap peace